We are back with another episode. Today I'm going to try to fix the stiff steering. Let's go. So the boat starts. That's great, but we have a little problem. This is loose over here and it won't turn any farther. I mean, it will turn, but it's really stuck. So I think I'll maybe start taking it apart, the steering in the back, and see what it's like. So what I've done right now is I'll uh, take this pin out over here like that, and I'll move the out drive and see if it's the drive getting stuck or it's the steering sheave. Alright, so the drive is pretty tight, so I'm pretty sure it's the uh, drive getting stuck seized in the uh, pivot points. So it turns out the drive is indeed stuck in there but I still don't like the uh, looseness in the steering so I'll have to fix that sometime later. But the drive is pretty stuck. Uh, moving it by hand is nearly impossible so and it might be stuck in the bottom there but I don't see any grease fittings so I guess we might have to take it apart. I'm not sure. I'll add some uh, WD in there, and then we'll see how it goes. Alright, so what we'll do is we'll uh, take this uh, end cap off. There's a snap ring inside there. We'll take the pin out. Then we'll shift the lower unit into forward gear. Then there we'll disconnect the little hose in the back for your speedometer. Then we'll take the six bolts out, and hopefully the lower unit slides off, and then we can see what it's like in there. Alright, so the end cap off. You can just pry it off you can use a screwdriver or whatever it just comes off like this it's just a plastic cap set that aside then we're gonna what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop this snap ring off I'll show you what it looks like in a bit you just have to press on the two edges of it to get it off you might need like an assistance of like a harder tool or something to just pry it off and it should pop off like that and it looks like this. That just pops on there, so set this bit aside. Now what we'll do is there's a, push the pin in if you can, possible. Avoid hammering it. Push the pin in, avoid hammering it, and watch out for a small washer like this. That'll it's fairly thin, so it's hard to get off there. If you can't slide it off, then try pry the washer out. If it's stuck on there, well, you'll just have to make sure it doesn't fall off at a later stage so you don't lose it. Alright, now we'll go ahead and slide this pin out. So, you'll have to go ahead, pull on the trim ram so the bit of pulling and tugging. You should be able to go ahead and uh, slide this pin right down. Make sure your drive unit is trimmed fully down. Might be a good idea to put a block of wood underneath just so it doesn't crash down on you. All right, so after a bit of tugging, I got the pin out, and the pin just looks like a pin. It looks like this with the plastic cap, same assembly. Watch out for these little bits inside here, because they can actually pop out. They're also, they're little plastic inserts. They seem pretty stuck right now, so. I'm not going to worry about that too much. Plastic inserts looks like look like this when you're taking things apart. Make sure you don't lose them. There's four of them, one on each side, on each side of the uh, trim rams. All right, now I'm going to take out these uh, bolts. There's three on each side with a 5 8 socket or anything 5 8, a 5 8 wrench you could use. Just get the bolts out. I don't recommend using an impact gun because these are nylocks and an impact gun really helps against stuck bolts to get them going but against nylocks it's not always the best idea. Alright let's go ahead and pop these nuts off.
Now we go ahead and uh, pull the drive off. So what it'll do is I'll take a board and just put it under the skeg right there. And then with a bit of tuggy, you should be able to pop the drive right out like that. Comes out with your shaft. Do this. And go ahead and put this aside. All right, we've pulled the drive off. This is what we're left with. I am suspecting that my stiff, stiff steering is coming from the hinge having all this marine fouling on it. The boat, luckily enough, it doesn't have anything, any of that crap because it has anti-fouling paint on it. That's beginning to come off right there, but I think I'll paint some new, new stuff on there. But the fouling on the drive is pretty bad. It's all over the place and it's absolutely driving me nuts. So that's what could be jamming the hinge in there. This is still like horribly difficult to turn. So inside we have our bellows. That's the big rubber sleeve in there that goes around the shaft. I have water in there because I took this apart uh, last time when it was raining. A bit of water got in there. But if you haven't taken it apart when it was raining and there's water in there and your gimbal bearing in the back, that bearing in the back, shiny thing is rusty then you might have bellows problems. Uh, those bellows might have a hole in them or something. So what I'll do right now, I think, is I'll uh, put some acid in the bottom there on the, the hinge to dissolve the uh, the uh, marine fouling, and then we'll see what that does. All right, so I'll go ahead and test out the new chemical right over here. It's pretty bad. We'll just do a bit, see how it works. All right, here we go. All right, well, we'll see how that works. There seems to be some kind of reaction right over there, so hopefully it's working. All right, right now I'm gonna go ahead and apply the acid a bit in there and uh, a lot in there. Let's go ahead.
All right, so I've applied the acid and it says to wait 60 seconds on the container, but I've clearly waited a bit more than 60 and it still doesn't help. So I think we'll have to pull the gimbal apart. So what I'll do now is I'll take out these two screws holding the trim center. There's one on the other side. Now this is where I recommend you use an impact driver so you don't strip the screws out. It really helps. And here's our first screw. And our second screw. And the trim sender should just pop out like this. All right, so now that we have the trim senders out, next there's a uh, shiny metal ring inside here in the bellows. So we're gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out along with your outdrive gasket. It should come out like that if it hasn't came out with the outdrive. And now I'm gonna go ahead and pull this ring out. Uh, ideally you need a special tool to pull it out, but as long as it gets out of there in one piece, you're pretty much good to go. Now, if you can't get it out in one piece, you can order a new one. They're like two bucks. All right, so I got the gimbal ring out. It just comes out like that. Okay, so now what I'll do is I'll pry up on the bellows inside and push it in there. So now what I'll do, I think, is I'll uh, take the uh, lower bellows off. There's a hose clamp. I'll slide that off. I'll do that right now. So what I'm talking about is this hose clamp here. So I'll go ahead and take that out right now. All right, I'm going to use a pair of uh, vice grips to uh, clamp on that hose clamp right there and take it out. <laughs> Okay, now with a bit of prying and tugging, you should be able to just go ahead and pull the clamp out like that. And we're left with this and uh, that. So we'll have to go ahead and pry this bellows off somehow as well now. A few moments later. All right, so after hours of grunting away, here's where we are. Bellows still hasn't come out. I got the uh, shift slide out. That was pretty easy. I'll show you how I did that in a bit. I got the um, exhaust bellows out. Show you right in there. On that fitting in the back. Right there, that big oval part. Right over here. This oval thing. There's a hose clamp on that. And then right under over here. Right this, this part. The um, other part of the exhaust bellows attaches on. And so we are left with a thing like this, which pretty much goes in there. And then there's uh, two hose clamps, one over here and uh, one on the other side. And you have to take those out with a flex drive attachment or something to get them out. Uh, next thing I took out was the uh, shift cable. I still can't get this fitting out in there, but I guess I'll, I'll say screw it. I'll have to take things apart. Uh, together. I tried uh, taking out the um, the uh, hinge pins but they're stuck tight so I have to take the bellows out first to heat them up from the inside and then that will be able to loosen up the red lock tight and then I'll be able to unscrew them. Alright now on the inside of the boat yes you do have to do stuff on the inside right down in there that fitting there's two bolts and a small plate which looks like this along with the uh, grommet a rubber grommet around the uh, water hose fitting so one thing I really did that was a stupid is that down beside the uh, water pump fitting there is a right there that is the fitting for your oil monitor hose and yes you bet 
I did snap it off because I was pulling on it. I thought it was a barb, but it turns out it's a friendly, a user-friendly little fitting. You just press the button here and you slide it off. That was kind of stupid. So right down here, the water hose, uh, the water pump hose, the one with the uh, shiny hose clamp on it. It's the one that's not letting the bellows, the big one, slide down. So I think I'll have to cut that either or somehow rip it out. Two hours later. All right, so I finally got the bellows out. Here they are. Oh yes, they do seem a little bit bent, but they were in this position for a little while while I was tugging at them. So hopefully they, they don't seem too bad. Then, now what I'll do is if you look inside there, you'll see the uh, shiny little spot in the uh, in there. Uh, this this little one over here, right here. That's the uh, that's the bottom of the hinge pin. So I'll have to heat that up, and then that might help us get the uh, hinge pin on the side out. So. Let's go try heat it up, see what happens. There's red Loctite in there, so I'll go and torch it, give it some heat to uh, see if that helps it get loose eventually. So how did I get the shift cable out? I'll explain to you right now. It was also another screw up. Now, first I screwed it up, then I looked in the service manual, which is really stupid. So what you have, over here is your shift cable it comes out of this tube here and then once you take all of this apart like that comes off over there there's going to be one of these shift linkages but there will be instead of these pins there will be two bolts so you take those two bolts out and you pull the entire shift cable out of this sheave now what I did is I cut the little knob off, I tried to unscrew the little knob off on the end and it broke off and I left to weld it on I guess. Alright, let's use our big bad breaker bar and I've got this little uh, hinge pin tool, looks like this and it goes on a half inch socket like that and then along with our breaker bar we might be able to break it, let's go. Here goes nothing, guys. Okay, so we got the hinge pin out. Let's unthread it and see what it looks like. That's a horrible noise. Oh yes, we got it out. Looks like this. Apparently it's supposed to have red Loctite on it, but I don't see any. Let's go ahead and take out the other one. And the other one's loose. This one's a bit harder to unthread. Alrighty ho, here's our second one. All right, so now there's a little safety wire on the side. I don't know if you can see it. We have to unscrew that. That just comes off with a Phillips bit with one of these. Okay, we should be able to get the helmet off now. Hopefully, maybe, please get off. Please don't stop. All righty, where's where, here's where we're at. We got our shift cable boot right over there. And you have to get that hose clamp off. That's a little gonna be a little bit of a bummer and then it should slide off. Let's go ahead and do this. All right, so I've got the bell housing off and this is the pin that I was taking this thing apart for so long. Hopefully we can drive that out. I'm gonna try an air hammer, see what happens. All right, so I've got my air hammer. Let's see what happens. Here we go, I'm gonna one hand this. This tool is so powerful. I've been pounding away with a hammer for a while and a chisel and it doesn't work. Watch this thing. Bam, one shot. 
And there's our pin there. Actually, it looks really good. Let's try to turn the steering now without the pin. And the steering is still a bear to turn, so... Ah, unfortunately, it's the top hinge that's screwing things up, so I'll have to figure out how to take that apart now. Alright, so I've been thinking over a couple of pits and pats and what they call for in the service manual is either you rip the motor out or you drill two holes, one on this side, one on that side, you tap a thread and you put a plug in there. I'm thinking that'll look kind of ghetto, and that's pretty risky. I risk screwing up my transom. So it seems like we're going to have to pull the motor out. What's going to happen is we're going to remove the entire transom. Just because of this stupid stiff steering problem, we have to remove the entire transom, the motor. And then inside there, inside that slot, there's a big nut that is preventing the upper hinge pin from coming out. So that's our objective to get that out. So unfortunately it turns out that I have to take the motor out. That really sucks. So next video, I'm gonna be doing a motor uh, removal video and stay subscri subscribe and stay tuned for that one. See you next episode.